it's a very long, complicated story, but we recorded um, a version of the album for a record company way back in 95. And then we took our record company to court because the band split in half, went two ways with two different managers. And subsequently, uh, we withheld the album, gave their, uh, the record company some songs, which they made an EP out of, and then we used the rights for the album, we recorded it. But the original recording of the album has never seen the light of day. And the, now we're working with the original record company that we took to court, and they want to bring it out next year, so, because it's going to be the 20th anniversary. So something else that's got to be done. The three previous tours, maybe four actually, we've always played the Bath Clan. So yeah, it was with some shock, obviously. Um, ironically, we played an amazing um, place, uh, Cabaret Sauvage. Yeah, I thought it was Cabaret Sausage when I first got out. I was like, what? Yeah, we had. A strange incident there as well because our roadie spotted um, this man who was loitering around and he just was being very suspicious and he got so worked up about it that he actually said he went to our tour manager and said someone's acting really strange in the crowd they keep like that they've been there all day walking around nobody knows who they are and they're in the crowd they keep so um, yeah he was a bit worried about that and he mentioned that before he doesn't know whether they were casing the joint or whatever, but yeah. Well, what can you do? It could strike any time at anywhere, um, and people just gotta be vigilant, you know, you can't live in fear. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I am no, well, there's a lot of things that have happened. 911 didn't change our views of touring. Um, the death of the Pantera guy um, didn't change our view of touring. A little bit. Everybody knows they're vulnerable when they're on stage. But like I say, there's so many bands out, so many venues, so many places. It doesn't necessarily have to be a band either. The day after the, the French uh, incident, we played in Copenhagen and we had uh, two members of a SWAT team like hiding out by the entrance with, with fully automatic rifles, you know? Um, sort of just hiding just in case anything happened. I don't think anybody was aware that they were there. The Perfect World would be a place where, um, where people respect each other, but it would also be a, a less populated place. Um, and that would involve uh, governments imposing legislation where people had to pay to have more children. I know it sounds an awful thing to happen, but to safeguard, you know, not all of us believe in the fact that we can go to a heaven where we're, you know, we're going to be suckled by, you know, hundreds of virgins after death. Some of us have a view to the future and think, well, our children are living here. And if we're populating the planet at this huge rate, in a couple of generations, there won't be enough resources and people will be dying regardless. Obviously, there's, you know, you've got personal fears about family and, and money and mortgage and you know, how you're going to pay for your next luxury yacht. <laughs> it's always a concern of mine. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I, I fear for the future of music because of the, the current climb of people downloading and, and they're having such a short attention span that they find it very hard to, you know, people prefer to spend their money on whatever, I don't know, computer games or whatever, rather than, than albums and, and, and the realisation that they will have soon that, you know, their favourite bands will start disappearing, winking out like faded stars because they won't have the, the money to, to do quality records or the money to, to tour. I, I, I know quite a few bands that, that I'm very good friends with, that are big bands that people are taking other jobs and they haven't worked their whole lives. They've, they've worked in the music industry, so going out and doing a, a manual day's work is, is, is a, not a surprise, because they work hard, but it's been a struggle for them because they've got no qualifications in that area of expertise. And so it's just making their lives very difficult musically. We're quite fortunate in our band that, that you know we've, we've survived 
you know, 22 years, we're a big band, but, you know, the mountain's sliding and, the, you know, the bands are sliding down the hill because there's such an avalanche of, of, of new bands and bands that are reforming because they've reached that age where they've got, you know, a bit of time on their hands, they're in their mid 40s, they want to restart the band and the lack of sales and whatever. So I do fear, I, I don't believe it's the, the death of music. I think with the opening up of Eastern Europe and Russia, that will extend people's touring cycles. Whereas before they used to just go to, they do Europe, they do Asia, they do America primarily.